examples, I would like to say a few words about myself, not too much, because you can always uh, connect with me or link uh, with me on LinkedIn or anyway, you can investigate about myself uh, also later on in different ways. But just to share with you uh, some information about me, I specialize myself uh, since I would say the beginning of the 2000 uh, when I graduated uh, in work and organization uh, psychologist, I specialized myself in diversity and multicultural management, intercultural communication and management, and in developing management and international competencies. I normally offer my expertise as an intercultural trainer, coach, and consultant, and I like to support people and organizations in the intercultural competition and in the multicultural integration and management. I work with different types of companies, uh, industries, and the economic sectors, and I develop with them tailor-made and customized training program and tools, which includes different learning methodologies. Uh, some topic of my expertise are gender differences and the opportunities, uh, developing program, competence and performance evaluation, and CSR sustainability and innovation. Um, I'm also currently teaching with cultural management at the International Master Program in Global Business and Sustainability at the Catholic University of Milan, in particular um, giving the ALTIS I um, uh, for enterprises and society. And I really enjoy to do it. Uh, I wrote some publications and articles about diversity management. Uh, some of the Italian um, articles uh, are available also. Um, well, what are we going to uh, talk about the viewing? That, uh, how I would like uh, to spend the next more or less one hour together. Uh, I will try to learn what is the XY factor and why uh, is it important for uh, companies to consider and to manage XY integration um, in a proper way. We will see together which are the risks and which are the benefits, uh, but which are the risks, of course, of uh, not uh, integrating properly by um, generation and we have the benefits um, on the other side uh, of uh, proper by integration. And we will see an example uh, about how it's possible to manage XY integration within companies. In particular, I will share with you a business case with the uh, um, facilitation and training program which I developed, developed uh, together with the HR department of um, uh, Italian international uh, company which is, um, which is in the automotive industry. Uh, I will share with you the process I developed for them and the tools we used together. And of course we will conclude the webinar with question and eventual, eventual reflection about the topic or any well, suggestion or anything uh, might drive. If I could yes. just interrupt, the, the microphone is a little bit iffy. I didn't, if you just get the sweet spot, the right position there, um, it's going to be easier for everybody. Okay, I'll try to That's uh, better. get closer. That's better. My... That position That's is great. good. Okay, let's start then. Can I start with the beginning? So what is the XY integration and why XY integration is relevant uh, for HR company strategy? Um, well, who, the ones of you who were thinking about XY um, factor as the male and female chromosom chromosomical recombination 
or any other kind of uh, sex and genetic recombination? Well, the answer this time is no. We are not going to talk about gender differences uh, or any kind of uh, DLBT uh, possible um, uh, identity to integrate within organization. But uh, we are going to talk about uh, ages diversity, in particular generational diversity uh, within organizations. Well, the literatures uh, consider sometimes four, sometimes five uh, generation levels uh, or age spans, depending on the literatures. Uh, most of the literatures on this topic uh, came from uh, Anglo-Saxon culture as uh, most of the diversity management uh, topics as well. Um, but anyway, we will consider five uh, generational levels. The first one will be traditional or also called matures, uh, that are um, the people who, were, uh, who are uh, nowadays between the 70s and 90s. They were uh, born between the 1928, uh, 28, 1924, the first uh, generation level. The second one, or group, you can consider them also group for group identity. And uh, the second one uh, is composed by the baby boomers, um, which are now in the 1970s. The third generation is what we call generation. Uh, which are between the 35 and 50, and generation Y are uh, also sometimes called millennials. Uh, some of the literature do not consider the generation uh, Y as millennial, uh, but this is depending on uh, what we can find in the literature. Anyway, generation Y, uh, they are the people between 35 um, and 50. And 35 years old. And then there is the generation Z, um, which are in some cases called millennium, and they are under 20 years old. Uh, well, it would be nice to know uh, which one of you, if any are present, are traditional. Are there any traditionals? So people who are between 17 and 19? Mm -hmm. You can rise to your hand, but I don't see any hands. Um, so it means that nobody of this age is present. Anybody in the boomers? We've had, had some hands go up. Um, so, yeah, a couple of guys uh, responding there. We don't want to embarrass anybody by them revealing their ages. But Maura, also, okay. please, please, please keep it the sweet spot because it does go quite quickly into bad sound. Okay, uh, Generation X, do we have, I suppose most of uh, the attendees are between the 35 and 50 years old. Yeah, we've got plenty uh, of uh, hands blasting up for Generation X, that's good. They're here in, force, here in numbers, good. And any Generation Y uh, between the 20 and 35? Don't be embarrassed, Yes, yes, we've got a couple there, not many, but a couple, good, thank you. Eight and any under 20s, so generation set. They should really be in bed by now, but anyone? Nobody, nobody. <laughs> they are all in bed. <laughs> no generation set, no traditional. Well, that's uh, normally <laughs> happens also uh, in the organization or in, um, in companies. Let's see uh, what are the main characteristics of uh, each of these. Uh, um, generation group. Well, traditional or also called matures, uh, they were born before the Second uh, World War. Uh, let's say they, they are the people quite uh, fit um, in terms of gender role. Um, they, in terms of values, they are very attached to nuclear family. Uh, let's say that the maximum aspiration, work aspiration, was to become owner of a home and uh, end of a car. Uh, 
uh, they were looking for the job for uh, all their life, and they were um, and they still pre prefer to communicate face to face with face to face meeting, or they um, used to use formal letters. Um, Baby boomers, uh, um, they are still present in many companies. Um, they have, actually they are very traditional as well because they were born during the Second War. Um, so they are very attached to work as well. They have very strong competence that they build up uh, during their career. And they are often the management line who is retiring if, uh, well, they are very close to, reti uh, to retiring people, um, to the retiring period, sorry. Uh, the work aspiration is, um, is the job security as well. Um, they started to use, they are considered early IT because they started to use IT, but they become IT adopter. They had to learn to use email and to use the internet while they were very used to face-to-face uh, -face meeting and to telephone. Um, Generation X, they um, are also um, the people called uh, changes or revolutionary people because actually they were born mainly during the end of the uh, Cold War and before the falling of the Berlin Wall. wall they, have a, they don't have a very strong social identity. They are also considered somehow uh, scenic, um, without values or affects, or uh, without a sense of um, untrust uh, toward uh, tradition and the future. Uh, they are very pragmatic because they are looking for money, earning. Um, about uh, job aspiration, they are more focused on work and life balance. Uh, they are digital, although they are not nat native digital, but they have to migrate to a digital way to communicate. Indeed. Uh, they use very often mobile and mail because uh, still nowadays, of course, are the main uh, communication tools that we use. Then Generation Y, um, also called in some cases next generation, next generation because it's the generation uh, after the X generation. Uh, some literature, as I was saying, calls them already millennials because they were born uh, between the 80s and almost the 2000s, they are actually the uh, digital native. Uh, they have always been used uh, text or SMS and social networks. And, and somehow they grow up also being protected by their family. And they normally have a high self-esteem. Uh, well, they are also a generation which uh, are considered to have a strong civil sense because they are also the generation of Occupy Wall Street, of the Indignados, of the Arab Spring. Um, so this is the reason why um, they, strong, uh, they have a strong civil sense because they uh, often are involved in a movement, social movement. They are very multitasking, um, and actually, uh, they are not attached to. They are not very loyal to an employer, an employer or to a company. Uh, they feel uh, free to change company and to looking for a better job situation. Um, they are quite flexible, and they use all the communication media. Uh, so they uh, use, they are often online, often online, and they use very often mobile devices as well. And finally, the generation Z, uh, born after the 2000s, they are always connected. Actually, they are 
the PC or mobile device generation. Uh, they, they are always active and looking for information on the internet, and they are also participate in the pro pro production of media and of um, uh, digital information. Uh, normally, uh, they are considered the generation without relationship and or strong relationship or uh, emotional re relationship. They are not static at all, always dynamic. And, and they always have the mobile device uh, in their hands. So they communicate all the time with different communication media channels. Well, I don't know if you uh, found your well, if you recognize yourself in these uh, uh, generational pictures, if you agree or not agree with these characteristics. Yes, no? Matthew, you there? Yeah, it, take, it takes a minute for people to type. If, if you want to type in a comment here, does that fit? Do you agree? Have you got a different opinion? Just type it in, and we can we could even read out something now. Uh, Mara, it just takes a second for people to type in it for it to send. Okay, got? I can see any typing, so I have no idea. It's exciting. It's a mystery. No one's typing at the moment. If you've got a comment oh. there, when you said, I must say, generation uh, that you know they've always got a, a, a telephone in their hands. Um, here we go. We don't know quite who it is. I'm between X and Y. So, yes, I think some people are combining two columns here and feeling more than one, but that's quite interesting as well. So we're getting a positive agreement there. Okay, no more answer. So, Actually, well, we have, I tell you, what, we have this thing. <laughs> we're annoying Nicola. She says she had a reaction before. I was going to save it to the half time that she's looked at what you put up there and said and wonder and asks uh, where is the research based? So are there some countries that uh, put, you know, are studied? Are there some cultures? And which socioeconomic class are we talking about? Uh, so she's thinking it's quite, it looks quite US centric. Where, where, where's the data collected from? Yeah, exactly what I what I said. Uh, that um, most of the literature is based on Anglo-Saxon uh, culture, mainly in uh, multinational companies. Yeah. Uh, and if you want, well, um, I, I can share with anybody who is interested the slides, of course, the PDF slides, and I can share with you also some. Uh, particular references from where I found this um, this research. I think it's a better idea so that you can have more details. Sounds interesting. Okay. Sounds good. And Jana makes a comment. So she would question Generation Z uh, needing security and stability. Do you have a comment about that for Jana? Well, in somehow they do, but in some other how they used to uh, search for in somehow what can be perceived from other generation as insecurity. Because here the point is that uh, different generation have different values, yep. and that has uh, happened between. Um, in cross-cultural communication, so uh, in communication that it's happening among different people coming from different cultures, uh, it's very frequent the misperception uh, of um, well of priority or what might be important or more important uh, for one generation might not be the same for the other. For the yeah. other one, yeah. generation Z is always looking for opportunities. Looking is um, always looking for the possibility to change and to change for something they perceive better than the previous situation. So of <laughs> course, if, uh, if to say uh, generation Z, um, if to say uh, or to make the um, um, 
to, to the, if the generation X is looking at generation Z, generation X can say, oh yes, they are very unstable, very insecure. Uh, but on the contrary, generation Z can say, this is my way to live without to perceive it as a problem or uh, as something uh, with ne negative uh, aspect. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Uh, so, if we move, let's see. I think okay. we're good. So why the company, anyway, uh, should uh, start to uh, consider the XY integration uh, phenomenon and why is it relevant for them? First of all, if we look at the Eurostat uh, figures, uh, in particular if we look at the historical trend about life exp expectancy, uh, we can see that in the last 50 years, um, people used to live uh, ten, plus 10 years. It means that life expectancy uh, rose of 10 years. So if during the 70s people used to live uh, on average until 66 years old, uh, now uh, men mainly they used to live until 76 years old on average. And while women uh, they were living until seven, uh, 72 years old during the, um, the 60s. Now they live until 82 years old. So 10 years more of life, which means 10 years more uh, possibly uh, of um, working years. Uh, well, of course, uh, pension and uh, retiring reforms have a of court in the last years, but still people uh, live more and they have more time to dedicate uh, to their private life, but also to work if they want. And uh, what we can observe that while uh, life expectancy is extending, on the other uh, hand, it is it is observable a bird's rate failing. So there is a shift um, in general uh, in Europe, um, less birds and more people alive for a longer period. Uh, and actually because of this reason uh, in many countries uh, in Europe, uh, as I was saying before, occurred uh, reform um, pension, uh, pension reforms, uh, so it was an, ex an, an, an it occurs also an extension of um, the working um, age, so people actually work until later because otherwise uh, there will be also uh, pension uh, problems in terms of um, money that uh, every welfare uh, policy uh, should use um, in each country, uh, so we can see that people is working actually more. And actually, what is happening is that um, young people enter in the job market later, and there is a co-presence for a longer period of X and Y generation. And this is exactly why X why integration uh, is a topic which is relevant in the HR strategies and agenda. Uh, well, here we can see uh, what is happening at Italian level, uh, as exactly the sister I told you about, about the birth rates and the death rates, as you can see um, on the bottom left side of your screen. Uh, you can see the, uh, the gray uh, line, which is the death rate, and the um, blue line, which is the birth rate. And you can see exactly um, an, in an increasing of the gap between these two rates. Um, and this is the problem, of course, because um, we won't have people who will actually replace uh, the people who is going to die. If we go out from the European level and we uh, move our perspective 
uh, in some uh, extra Europe states, uh, we see that the XY, um, XY integration issues is relevant also in other countries, in particular in the um, in US. What we can observe is that um, Actually, uh, US is uh, still uh, nowadays one of the largest millennium population countries, but um, what is going to happen more and more is that there will be a co-presence of uh, set it and Y uh, generation. And nowadays, the um, Y generations are the uh, is the generation that is uh, holding management and professional position. Uh, and this uh, phenomenon is going to increase by the 2060s. Well, in China, uh, what is happening is that because of the one-child law, uh, the Chinese population is rapidly aging. Uh, actually, the same is happening in several uh, um, Asian countries. Today, actually, it was the age day uh, in uh, Japan. Uh, Japan is a super-aging society. They have the um, uh, most uh, number of uh, over 100 years old um, population. And, and what is happening in China and other uh, uh, Asian countries is that uh, management pra practices are moving from, uh, are, are migrating from a career development um, criteria based on seniority to a career development criteria which is based more and more on competence. So it's very possible that uh, fresh um, young leader uh, have to cooperate and have to live uh, more and more uh, senior uh, people and that they have different perspectives and different views about working and about uh, how to um, how to uh, how to bring their energy and and their perspective to the organization. And it's very difficult for this a new, fresh generation uh, to be respected and to be legitimized as leaders. And if we go to South America, uh, I have here an example of what is happening in Argentina. Uh, as you can see from the graph, in Argentina, uh, the, uh, the uh, Y generation uh, is, is quite uh, high, uh, higher than the other countries we have preview, previously seen. But what is happening in the working market is that uh, just a small part of this uh, um, Y uh, generation group um, is, uh, actually is inside the, the job market because uh, organizations prefer to hire um, it's, um, it's generation uh, people. So X and Y, of course, generation people. So the generation said in uh, Latin American countries is uh, most of the time outside the market. And actually the same is happening, for instance, in India, where there is, um, uh, India, of course, is uh, together with China, is one of the largest um, population country in the world, and actually in India uh, there, um, there is the highest uh, millennium population in the world, but they are out of the market. Uh, although they are graduated, although they have competency, uh, normally um, the companies, because of the culture of management, prefer uh, to hire first uh, each uh, generation. Uh, and why generation. So this is um, again uh, a problem which is very sensitive um, almost all over the world. Any question about uh, this uh, uh, figures? A very interesting question. So we, we guess we're talking about stable local non-alien populations 
and we're excluding immigrants. So we could just extrapolate. Um, if you look at the, the wildness of Europe right now, uh, so it's less global, do you think uh, the immigrant issue and the flows there will actually change this dynamic? Well, actually, uh, well, uh, thank you for the question, which is very ses sensitive in this period. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, one of the strong arguments that even the European policy is bringing in order to overcome uh, prejudges and um, and stereotypes about immigrants is that actually uh, immigrants, the um, uh, first generation and second generation, they will be the um, part of the population that will be able to replace um, the, the population that actually is not burning anymore by um, by native, uh, uh, by European natives that things that are not making any more child. Yeah. So, of course, then of, if we consider the U.S., when I'm talking about generation diversity, I haven't mentioned anything about um, about um, multiculturalism in terms of uh, nationalities and uh, ethnic and cultural diversity, because, of course, uh, the, uh, the population is very multicultural in this sense. You have already second and third migrant generation which are considered, anyway, Native uh, Americans. Yeah. Uh, so, well, in Europe, of course, the, the, the issue that you link with uh, generational uh, um, needs, let's say, uh, of course, is very linked, anyway, with the issue of migration. Well, can I uh, go on? Yep, yep. We, um, we talked about uh, sociological groups until now. We said that there are some differences in terms of values. We said that there are some uh, different perspectives about priority and about working motivation, about how to, co uh, to communicate and so on. But we still haven't mentioned what are uh, the problems that actually uh, company can face in case they do not consider its why integration. Uh, well, actually, we all know uh, that teams are uh, composed by very er heterogeneous human resources, uh, where uh, uh, for uh, multiculturalism we can include different professions, different lines, uh, but also we can include people uh, with different ages and uh, different company seniorities. Uh, that need to work together and to collaborate together. Uh, but because of the uh, generation cultural diversity, uh, those uh, diversity can create uh, conflict dynamics, uh, and those conflicts, they can constitute some organizational barriers in companies' productivity, in a company's good climax and wellness, and they can cause uh, professional fatigue uh, and a feeling of um, being uh, distressed and not working well for the organization. Um, um, more, uh, furthermore, uh, more and more, as I mentioned for uh, Asia, more and more um, career development plans are based uh, on performance evaluation. So many companies are migrating from a seniority criteria to select and to, um, and to give opportunity for uh, career development. They are actually migrating to a criteria which is based more and more on competency. And, and this uh, new, new way to manage people um, actually, it's very linked also with the situation of plants or office uh, where there are downsizing and team restructurating, restructuration or uh, re-engineering processes. And, well, all, all these phenomena together, they can create conflict and they can be uh, a loss uh, for, uh, for, for many companies as well. Uh, 
uh, which can be, of course, uh, dysfunctional for the company's productivity. And actually, the, the issue is so important that uh, the 2012 uh, was uh, named by the European Union as the year of aging uh, integration. So it's really a huge problem that needs to be more and more considered. Well, on the other side, of course, there are opportunities for companies in case they are able, as we said, to proper manage, 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 proper manage, sorry, uh, why integration. And first of all, uh, thanks to generation confrontation and uh, thanks to the fact that it is uh, facilitated in a good way. Uh, confrontation can overcross closure, defense, and segregation. Uh, and thanks to um, a good facilitation process, uh, people from different ages can share knowledge and they can transfer uh, skills from one generation to another. Uh, on the other side, uh, as we said, that can be a problem with young leaders' uh, recognition and legitimation. Uh, by senior employees, while um, if it's possible to overcross this, um, uh, this conflict of phenomenon, uh, young leaders may be recognized and actually they can bring uh, benefits to the team and to the company as well. Uh, everybody of uh, a team, an heterogeneous team also by, um, by ages can bring value, uh, specific value to the company or to the team, and they can use in a better way the energy and motivation. And of course, uh, consequently, a company can get um, efficiency and effectiveness, uh, so that, um, for teams, in fact, the department of efficiency and company efficiency as well. Any question, comments, curiosity until now? I think we've, here we go. Uh, which areas? Uh, no, I like that. And, and we've had some stuff. The, this generational idea, uh, this, the, the validation, younger managers to older managers, that seems to be a critical issue. How do you think that can be achieved? Well, this go it's worked exactly, I'm going to explain right now, sharing okay. with you the business case I developed uh, with uh, the Italian uh, automotive company. So shall I go with this? Go uh, for it. Sounds good. In mo more interesting topic, it seems to be. Well, uh, this is exactly what I tried to, to do with, um, uh, with an international Italian company. Um, it was to um, to co-design with the HR department a business um, a project uh, for this manufacturing company. I will tell you something before about the um, company context, and then I will share with you process and tools. Uh, well, the company uh, is an Italian manufacturing company, specialized, as I said, in the automotive uh, and electronic components. Uh, the headquarter of the company is based uh, in the northeast side of Italy. Uh, the company it has in total five plants, but three of which are uh, in Italy, uh, plus one is based in Slovakia, and another plant is based in Mexico. Uh, so it's not a multinational company, but it's an international company, uh, considered of uh, medium size. Uh, because um, the company has about 2,000 employees uh, globally, but 350, uh, about 350 um, employees work in Italy. And in particular, in Italy, there were, uh, at the time, we developed together um, these projects that was actually two years ago. Uh, they had 94 baby boomers, 170 four generation X, 104 generation Y, uh, no uh, gen generation Z. 
And what was happening at the time is was that because the Italian economical crisis, the Italian production production offices were facing a restructuring restructuration process or a downsizing, if you want to say, uh, nicer or re-engineering re process. Actually, some people were fired, and some other were in layoff. Do you say it's correct, Matthew? Do you say in English layoff? I have layoff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, actually, it was the first time that the company used this kind of um, of practices because until um, until this time, let's say, uh, the company always had a very positive uh, um, indicators, performance indicators, uh, particularly in terms of economic performance indicator. Um, so. Uh, it was really the first time that the company were facing uh, a negative period and took a, a, such a dra drastic decision. Uh, so what the HR department started to do was to start to recompose the production teams in particular. Uh, in particular, actually selecting and choosing new team leaders or chiefs of, of production uh, by better balancing um, exactly this phenomenon. Um, so by better balancing the seniority criteria um, evaluation, uh, excuse me, by better balancing the um, seniority criteria for career development that the company used to use with uh, uh, criteria uh, based, uh, career development criteria based on evaluation of technical and managerial competence. Like, for instance, uh, more on initi initiative, uh, company commitment, uh, the ability to drive other, uh, adaptability to changes, and so on. Um, and in general, what was happening was that uh, most of the employees were quite shocked about these company changes uh, and about the period that they were living. Many people uh, were really impressed. Uh, and so the, also the company climax wasn't positive at, at all. It was quite conflictual and for the first time some people at uh, management level were looking for uh, other kind of job possibilities. And, and actually the new young managers that were uh, uh, chosen and selected by the HR department using the uh, technical and management competence evaluation uh, they didn't have enough management knowledge or skills, uh, so they were not enough prepared to manage their new team. Composed, of course, of, of course, by uh, heterogeneous uh, team members, also by age, ages. So this was the context, and these were the uh, the projects that uh, goals that. Uh, we define it together with the HR department. So uh, the first goal was to integrate and to develop teams and team members, uh, particularly uh, uh, teams and team members of the production department. Uh, the second goal was to develop and to activate a new young chief of production, uh, more self-aware leadership, particularly linked with um, diversity and with aging management. Uh, the second goal was to valorize, valorize team members, thus to benefit of their engagement, uh, their knowledge transferring and creation, and uh, of their effective uh, work in general. Uh, so the ability actually to manage team members properly. And the last but um, but not less important goals was to show uh, to the uh, production department uh, that uh, although the company was living in this uh, downsizing and re-engineering uh, period and process, the company was still investing um, in HR, uh, dedicating to uh, the, the, the project uh, participants time and of course uh, money uh, in order to develop uh, their skills. So, 
who uh, were the uh, employees that actually participated in the project. Uh, there were um, uh, a group of 18 employees, as I said, uh, in particular of the production department. And there, uh, it was present the director of, of the production department. Um, five middle managers were present as well, like for instance, uh, Lean System Management, HR Management, the production manager, uh, the quality managers, and so on. Nine, nine chief of production that were actually the people uh, who were uh, se um, selected as new chief of production. So they were the, the person who actually uh, were needed to, to improve their skills, and in particular, the aging management skills. And plus, there were other three employees uh, or staff that uh, were working for the controller, purchasing, and transferring process um, management. So they uh, were all involved in, uh, in the facilitation and uh, training program. And you can see some pictures here. Uh, we worked together during summertime, so the HR wanted to create an event also uh, in order to, uh, to, uh, to simulate, let's say, a, a lighter uh, experience or a, a lighter atmosphere. Uh, so we were outside in a, in a bar uh, so that we could really use also what are uh, quite known uh, among the uh, social community as um, um, as um, work cafe methodology. So let's see what was the process uh, we developed together. Any question until now? Uh, not hire younger. Uh, there is a question. I'm wondering why companies do not hire younger people. They are usually paid less. Is this a question? That was a question that came in. Have you got an answer, Mara? Uh, well, in, in particular, the industry I'm talking about is a very uh, technical and specialized um, field of production. It means that uh, you can hire younger people, but you need to train them. You need to dedicate a uh, very a good um, yep. training program, uh, in particular from the technical uh, point of view. And if you consider that actually you are uh, firing uh, the, um, the elder people, the senior people with the most of the uh, expertise and uh, technical competence, it's very difficult that you are able to, to make the senior people to train the younger that are, that actually are perceived as the one that should replace the ones who are uh, fired. So this is actually the, yeah. uh, the burning issues that was occurring in this company. And that's why the um, HR manager wanted to work on this issue. So the process was, uh, as I said, was a, facilita a facilitation process, uh, which means that the first step was, first of all, to analyze the organizational chart and to understand uh, what was the impact of aging on um, uh, inside the organization? So uh, it was really an age analysis of all the uh, company, uh, Italian company workforce. Uh, secondly, uh, we um, actually I ran for them a work cafe workshop um, using some generation uh, cards. Uh, I created this generation cards tool that are actually also sellable. Uh, well, I can share with you this tool as well. Uh, and actually, here the purpose was, as I said, to create a very light atmosphere. Uh, the third step was the creation of a, of a virtual blended environment. So one because it's uh, an automotive industry, one of the values is definitely innovation. So more you are able to bring innovation uh, within uh, the company also through training and more they are uh, uh, open and really 
to, to implement something new that can be usable. Uh, the first step uh, was the proper training session, uh, or uh, I call it follow-up because actually it was the follow-up session after uh, we met each other um, face to face uh, during the workshop cafe. Uh, but the training session was a proper uh, training session about age diversity and aging management. So here they learned some tools and some practices and they actually had to develop the personal um, personal action planning in order to, in particular, the chief of production, uh, they had to implement the um, age analysis to the team members and to use tools in order to uh, better manage manager ma manager uh, the team members. Then, of course, there was the time to develop to, to develop the DPD uh, or the DPA, uh, so they have time to implement the development of personal action plans. And then we follow up all the process with a team coaching session uh, that were useful in order to monitor, monitor what uh, has been done, but also um, in order to share practices and in order to share a sort of uh, uh, leadership styles among the chief of production. So this is, as, as you can see, the quite complex uh, project that indeed uh, was run during one year's um, uh, one year. And I will share with you just some particular moments uh, I suppose all of you are, are uh, familiar with WorkUpace, correct? Or uh, is anybody who doesn't know anything about the World Cafe? Do you want to put your yellow hand up if you know about World Cafes? Looking about a quarter or so. So, that, yeah, we have some familiarity there, Mara, but not complete familiarity. Okay, well, the World Cafe is, a, well, as, as you could see in the pictures, uh, the Environmental Cafe was created uh, so that people could feel more comfortable, could share a feeling of uh, being part of a team, that uh, being uh, in an informal situation could share opinions, ideas, and uh, also could create together um, uh, some solutions to uh, teams and organizational problems. Um, and, and of course, uh, creating this, uh, this informal uh, atmosphere can give also the possibility to engage team uh, leaders and team members and to motivate them uh, to share and create knowledge. Um, and then the intention of this work cafe was starting to, to analyze the aging uh, problem or issues within the team, department, and organization, but also to start to think to together about uh, future strategies, action, and solution to put into action later on uh, in the uh, second, third um, steps of the facilitation process. As you can see, the cards, generational cards, are some cards which I created, uh, which are a simple uh, game uh, to be used in order to, to stimulate the conversation. Um, there are, they are visual, but they have also uh, some, some questions. I will show you, for instance, uh, one of the first questions is, what are the diversity characteristics you can recognize within uh, your organization? Uh, and this is what's useful uh, in order to start to analyze the aging, um, um, the aging issues inside the organization. Somebody answered, um, it's just a uh, cultural background, uh, aging diversity, in fact, personal interest, in fact, uh, the character, expectation about work, um, impact the working experience you can have and so on. Um, 
as you can see during the workshop cafe, for the ones who are not familiar, uh, people have to share opinion, information, practice, idea, and so on. But and they can they have to write down um, on a paper. Uh, but they can properly writing down. But they can also draw uh, what are the the ideas so that there will be uh, a memory of. Um, what is actually happened during during the work cafe and uh, later on during the follow-up session, uh, those uh, answer and the conversation uh, can be can be used in order uh, to go further uh, with the process. Um, then, for instance, uh, another uh, card was about life uh, lines. Um, they had to. Um, to draw uh, the lifeline steps uh, to draw the main events that happen in their life. And to, uh, within the table team, they have to talk about similarities and differences. Uh, this question, for instance, was useful uh, in order to, for instance, first of all, to overcross possible negative perception, but also to share something personal and start to reflect reflect about commonalities. So although the uh, teams were uh, composed by people of different ages or um, of different um, companies seniorities, uh, and although in every team there are diversity, there were also something uh, they could have in common. And it did many of them, for instance, uh, after the university, uh, they were they are quite traditional company and culture, uh, culturally, culture, a quite traditional um, culture companies, uh, in the meaning that most of them are engineers, mechanical engineers. After the university, they start to work for the, for the company. And most of them, not all, but most of them work at the same company. So, uh, same company, same professional careers, uh, family after they started to work. So in this sense, uh, many of them, they shared a similar stories. Uh, of course, then they, there were some, some differences in terms of choice, uh, in terms of uh, interest, and so on. But they could recognize that there were many similarities. And they actually enjoyed it. Uh, to, these uh, uh, stories about themselves. Uh, another was age diversity is a factor within your teamwork. How is it, is it perceived? Some of them answered that um, the difference are life differences. They have different goals, different priorities. They think in a different way. They have different uh, work uh, experience. Uh, or they approach problems in a different way. So they actually here started to analyze how age, um, uh, what, what are the diversity that age can bring to anything. And then uh, if aging uh, was considered a problem uh, within the company, uh, somebody said yes, somebody said uh, more or less, they actually connected the aging issues with uh, career and organizational uh, decision um, decision making. Um, so they started to face with the with aging as a, pro a problem or a burning issue uh, for the organization, for the company, particularly in this uh, peculiar period they were living. And then. Um, one of the, the cards um, was asking them to how uh, could they suggest to valorize the different generation uh, characteristics and how different generation can contribute to the production, uh, to the company production. And so here they started to share possible solutions, for instance, a team projects. Um, by uh, involving and integrating uh, different people during the practice, by uh, 
uh, implementing mentoring and tutoring uh, um, activities and so on. Um, so they started really to think how to uh, get the benefit of uh, aging diversity within the company. And, and here as well we have some, some solution. Uh, the question was how to improve the process of generation integration so as the process of uh, know-how and know what transferring information. And somebody even, as you can see, draw the work cafe. They consider the work cafe workshop at the beginning of an integration process. Uh, they valorize especially um, the possibility to start to work as a team. And, and for instance, uh, somebody said that the young can bring innovation. Well, the Y generation can bring innovation. The X generation can bring methods while the um, uh, elder generation uh, can bring the experience and can, well, and all these elements can be integrated. Uh, so as you can see, analysis and solution. This was the mainly uh, process needed also during the work cafe. Anyway, uh, generational cards are available. In case you are interested, you can write me and I will give you more information and uh, I can even send you the Thank you, Mara. Well, then, the, uh, you're welcome. welcome. Any one year, yes. one time, it, time is moving on. We do have something. Can you give a specific or the best example of bridging the gap between the younger and the older managers? Was any suggestion came out of the group maybe that was particularly yes. impressive? Well, here, for instance, what impressed me was, uh, as I said, the project team, uh, well, working as uh, more and more um, in a project team, and another was, for instance, to use senior people uh, in order to write procedures about problem solving. So the uh, the more um, the people with most expertise uh, could start to um, live a memories about the expertise, writing uh, what they learned uh, from the technical point of view by writing procedures, for instance. So here it was a, another very practical uh, way to, to manage and to integrate generational diversity. But then what we did together, and particularly during the follow-up and training session, um, I gave them uh, some tools about how to manage diversity. Because actually, if you look at the literatures, uh, if you look at the literatures, uh, age management depends a lot about how you perceive uh, aging and how you perceive, or actually not you as a person, but the company consider, or uh, team leaders consider aging, um, well, how they do consider aging. Because actually aging can be considered a resource in the most positive cases, of course, which are not uh, is is not so obvious and are not so often, and it can be considered a weight. So, uh, well, a weight for the organization. I give you here some example. Uh, in case um, um, aging is considered a weight, uh, so something to get rid of, um, because ages is connected with obsolescence, uh, attrition. Uh, with generational gap and uh, with um, let's say uh, with, the, with going out uh, soon uh, from the working market, um, there are several um, indicators that you can ob observe and you can analyze in your team. You can start to, for instance, analyze burning out uh, performance, like for instance uh, um, high level of absentees fitness, um, you can observe that people is working slowly and so on. So in this case, as a manager, you need to put into action some kind of tools and practice to better, to most effective uh, manage aging. While if you consider uh, 
for instance, uh, aging, well, if you observe, you do not observe absentee, but you observe, for instance, resistance to changes. Of course, the tools and the practice that you are going to put into action might be very different. Well, in one case, you can, uh, for instance, change the working contract or uh, using uh, senior people uh, for what um, for uh, the expertise and to live the memory of the expertise. Uh, hopefully, that they are going to share uh, the, the knowledge and skills. And in some other cases, to observe, for instance, uh, resistance to changing, uh, you can differentiate. For instance, in um, task and um, and activities division division. Um, well, if you observe that they are just really um, most aging people uh, are willing to are willing to uh, go out from the work, you can accompany them in the last two years in the transaction of um, going out uh, from the working environment. Uh, and for instance, you can use them to train or to mentoring uh, younger people. So here what I did was really to share with them uh, a toolkit of uh, indicators they could observe uh, and practice and tools that were already used in some other companies and that they could replicate uh, or uh, from which they could be inspired in order to um, in order to better manage, manage uh, the, the team. Uh, so during the training, they had to analyze, in particular, all the groups here, as I told you, there were different roles involved. Uh, what they had to do all together it was to support the chief of production, to analyze the team members, and to use aging management strategies tools and practice in order to uh, plan how to ma better manage the team members. Is it clear? Or Hello? Clear? Not clear? Hello? You okay, Mara? Matthew? Yeah, yeah, you okay? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I asked... Sorry, I, I was on mute, <laughs> just answering a few questions. Time is passing, so uh, we've, we've had a few people leave to put their children to bed, so if we can... Oops. <laughs> okay, so this was the, we are almost at the end, of course, in, uh, here they have to develop their personal uh, individual action plan, and then they had time to put into action the individual action plan, and then as I told you, uh, there was the team coaching session where all the individual um, action plan were uh, monitoring, would monitor it, and uh, they, they could give some suggestions to each other. So this is um, uh, the project. Uh, those were the activities and the tools that we used in this situation. And well, why uh, is it important? As we saw together, the total cost of XY not integration and valorization are, in general, company inefficiency and possible conflict in the working environment and consequently company losses, uh, loss. Uh, so um, what we can do is to work with the HR department in order to benefit of XY integration and to valorize uh, the possibility to get the best of the employees in terms of motivation, energies and skills, also considering uh, they age and how age can impact on this uh, um, human factor and uh, how uh, to transfer uh, knowledge and to create knowledge among uh, team members with different ages. And then as we, uh, as we can see, uh, more and more companies uh, also based on emerging countries are facing with the problem of XY integration. And why, um, although this uh, um, HR topic uh, is not yet uh, in the HR strategies and agendas, 
um, more and more uh, this topic is important and needs to be considered. And so as an intercultural expert, we can uh, uh, bring our uh, knowledge uh, and to help organizations to face these issues. Well, uh, that was all. Hopefully, well, we, we well then, Mara. a little bit. We, we have a, 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 a longer question here. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Are you feeling strong? Good. Uh, there, the, the, the audio was a little bit tricky, so just someone's just checking. I have had trouble hearing well what has been said, so perhaps I missed something. The new management team was chosen based on their skills. Which generational groups did they come from? So that's the question mark. I seem to have understood that they are younger, but now struggle because their lack of managerial, managerial experience. On the other hand, the criteria for making a choice was technical and managerial experience. So I'm a little confused. Apologies. Blah, 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 blah. Was, would, do you think that was clearly explained? Do you want to just say a word about that? Yes. OK, thank you for the question. Well, this is uh, due to the competency model. Actually, what the company uh, did in the same period we started this project was to change the competency, the management competency model. And um, uh, well, they mapped for the uh, they mapped for the first time the technical uh, skills that also uh, due to uh, technical production innovation uh, changed over the years. Uh, but they also started to introduce uh, management. Tra um, um, how do you say um, transversal or soft skills that were not considered before as management skills. And indeed, before I mentioned it, for instance, uh, um, the adaptability to changes, um, the ability to drive people, um, the ability to uh, analyze and to solve problems, and so on. Those uh, were new uh, management skills or aptitudes, if you want, uh, that were included for the first time in the management competency model. And because they changed their request in terms of management skills, they changed as well the criteria uh, in order to select the new leaders. So yes, new leaders were uh, mainly uh, the, well, uh, sometimes in few uh, cases, Y generation, in most cases, uh, X generation, and they have to manage or older X generation um, or, in uh, some cases, baby boomers with a lot of technical expertise in, um, well, very technical expertise. It's a mechanic uh, uh, company production. So as you can imagine, uh, working every day, uh, with a um, uh, mechanical uh, machine, uh, well, people who is doing this job for a lot of time, they might not, be, for instance, they might not have an MBA, for, uh, not so, sorry, not an MBA, but a master degree. Uh, so they might have just a secondary school, but they uh, collected uh, in their working life a lot of uh, experience and a lot of technical knowledge, while uh, Generation X, uh, they, um, they normally uh, were hired with um, a master degree, so more flexible in general, you can say uh, more open-minded, more uh, uh, open to changes and so on, but on the same time they didn't have all this technical experience as the previous one. Hopefully, I was able to answer to the question. Anyway, I didn't share with you the competency model. Great stuff. Very good. Okay, so a couple of people are... Uh, are <laughs> Sabina's got a follow-up question. She, she doesn't want to go and have her spaghetti. Uh, so how were these skills measured? Do you think you answered that? Uh, how were they measured? Yes, uh, there was a team where I chair, HR team, uh, that was composed uh, in that period, and they assessed uh, 
um, through the competence, the new management competency models, uh, all the production um, team members, well, all the production department members, and after this evaluation, the new fresh um, chief of production were selected. Okay. So assessment center and observation and okay. uh, uh, reciprocal feedbacks. Sounds very thorough, very professional. Mara, I think that's, that's probably most of the time we've got. Um, can I just say that was amazing, especially for your debut webinar. Well done, well done, well done. Um, what can we do? Could you, um, are you going to send out the slides? You could send out the slides to the participants. Um, and what should they do? If people are interested in your cards, your generational cards, should they send you an email? What's the best way to get in contact with you? Yes, and for any, for cards, of course, and for any kind of further question or curiosity, uh, you can write me or you can contact me and uh, we can have a chat on Skype. Sounds good. So you're open open to, to dialogue on that. Um, amazing. Yes. Thank you so much, Mara, for putting in the time and <laughs> overcoming our various technical difficulties. That was clear, yes. beautifully presented. And some interesting okay. ideas there. And thank you, thank audience. Uh, everyone, yeah. I thought, really went for it. Tons of questions. And you'll see those. I'll send those to you, Mara. So nice, oh. nice show. Uh, we, will show we will share also the uh, audio and video recording. Is correct? Yeah, it's being recorded, uh, not just by the NSA, but by my machine as well. We'll have that. So we'll give you a link. And also the people who couldn't who registered on the 7th but didn't turn up uh, tonight, we'll give them a chance to do it as well. So it's all going to be pretty good stuff. Actually, what I'll okay. do is... Okay. Ash, 